If I had to try to guess which ball in this image you are looking at right now, I would have no idea. However, in the image on the right, I would have a much better idea thanks to the emphasis that the light is casting on the image here. So that is the topic for the final part of this course, emphasis, which is using contrast to guide the viewer to give them a focal element in the image. So deceptively simple idea, but it's really powerful. So one way um, that you can use emphasis is with light fall off, which is uh, that light intensity will decrease over distance, right? And this is for every light in the known universe, right? That's how light physics works. Um, now, most of us have heard of this before, but the degree at which it's happening blew my mind. Just like in the last couple of weeks, as I started to experiment with these ideas, I was like, whoa, this is a hugely important um, uh, under, uh, concept to, to have in your arsenal when it comes to lighting something, okay? So let me just visualize this quickly, what this is happening, right? So we've got a single point of light and we have a plane, right? Now, this single point of light is gonna be casting rays in all direction, right? Bajillions of rays. And some of those rays are gonna be hitting the plane here. Now, we couldn't in real life count the number of rays, but in this case we can. Uh, 32 rays, right? Let's say that are hitting this plane. Now, if we were to double the distance that that plane is to that light source, right? Move that, double the distance behind it, uh, we would now only be receiving eight rays, which is one quarter of the amount of light, right? So the reason that this is so much less is of course, because as, it, as we go further and further back, the spread of those rays are missing that object. Um, and by the way, this is obviously assuming that that first plane there would not be casting any shadow on the one behind it, right? So it, it's not anything to do with that. Just the distance it is from the light source, it's gonna be receiving 75% le less light overall than the one in front of it. Absolutely crazy. I didn't realize it was this severe. Um, and I did this actually as an experiment in Blender, did this exact test, put one plane there, recorded the value, put another plane behind it, recorded that value, um, and it was exactly 75% less. Uh, but what's crazy is what happens when you uh, extend that and you go further and further and further back. By the time you've got like to number plane number eight, you can see you're getting like 98% fall off from where it would be at the start there. But what's interesting is that between that plane and the one in front of it, number seven, you can see that the, the light fall off is really only like a like point something of a percent fall off. Whereas from here to here, it's 75% right? The distance is the same between those two planes there and this one here, and yet the fall off is much, much less. And this is really the important concept to sort of wrap your head around, is that the further and further away something is from a light source, the less fall off you're going to get. This is why we can have a look at a building, and from the very tippity top of that building, all the way down to the floor, um, we're going to be seeing seemingly the same amount of light. And that is because from where the sun is, going almost 150 million kilometers to reach the earth, that final little tiny distance between the top of the building to the bottom is so infinitesimally small that the fall off is, uh, is almost imperceptible. You can almost not see it. In fact, I'd be, I'd, I would really question anyone who said they could see it. It's such a small amount of fall off, right? Um, so that's really in, in a way like at that point, it almost becomes like constant light, right? So what this means is when you're lighting something, so let's say we've got our lovely character here who is uh, very exposed. Again, not my character. I don't, do, I don't do clothing, I don't do rigging. So this is what you're gonna get. Um, now in this case, uh, the light is uh, about 120 meters above her, which is roughly 400 feet uh, for the weird Americans using still that old system. Um, about 400 feet up, and you can see that the light from like the top of her head to the bottom there is pretty constant. There's very little fall off. But watch what happens as we move the light closer and closer till it's just above her face there. Look at the fall off that's happening right now. Now, obviously I've adjusted the intensity of the lamp, otherwise she would just be completely bathed in just a blinding white light. Um, but you can see now that the, the emphasis is now on her face. The one on the left-hand side here, it's like everything has equal value. The one on the right here, eyes up here, right? That's where the focus is. Um, and it's the, it's like, it's the same lamp, just different light values and distance to the subject. So the closer you bring something to it, uh, the more emphasis you're gonna be creating right there. That's the key takeaway. The, uh, the closer it is, the more fall off, therefore the more contrast, therefore the more emphasis that's gonna have. So it's a hugely important um, uh, point to remember.
Um, the fall off was demonstrated really, really well in this image by uh, Carlos Ortega Alizeld. Um, we've got this lovely character and you can see the focal element is the face right there. And I don't know because I didn't see his, his scene file, but if I had to guess, the lamp is probably positioned about here because you can see the amount of light that's hitting her face right there. It's really, really bright, but the amount of light that's hitting like the bottom of her leg there is very, very small. And that has the compositional impact of like, this is the focus. This is the point of interest that you should be uh, looking at the most. It's the face. And that wouldn't be anywhere near as strong if the lamp was like really high up or like the sun because everything would have the same um, visual interest, right? Um, but positioning that there, it's put the emphasis there and it's helping to guide the viewer to what's important. Um, again, I don't know what he, I mean, he could have possibly used like a spot lamp there, but if I had to guess, it's uh, it's fall off. Really, really clever, really, really cool. So I just wanna end on fall off by saying that this is a really great video that I found um, that shows what fall off does from a real life photography perspective. Um, and how uh, moving the subject, camera, and light back away from an, an environment makes the environment fall into darkness, which is really, really cool. And it's it's a really good um, demonstration of it in, in real life. Um, so you can watch that by clicking up there. Uh, watch it at the end of this video first. This is more important. Uh, no. <laughs> but it, it's great to watch if you wanna learn more um, after this. So obviously fall off is one method. The other really obvious um, way to guide a viewer is uh, with the light itself, right? Um, by using uh, the environment around it, if you, when you're working with environments, um, where the shadows are, where the light is, is gonna have a big impact on where you are actually looking um, in your image. You swing the light around, you put light on the trees, suddenly your eyes are looking at the trees, you swing it around further, now you're looking at the, at the rocks. And I wanna emphasize that it's not the light itself that's making you look there uh, because you can see here, if we just have light everywhere uniformly, it's, it's having the opposite effect. Everything has equal weight, right? It's only when you have the light with the shadow, it's gotta have the two, it's gotta have something to contrast it off because that's what your eyes are drawn to. It's drawn to contrast, um, not necessarily just the light itself, it's the contrast that is, uh, that's actually taking your attention. So really simple, obviously, making an environment, where do you want people to look? See if you can position trees and things in a way that creates interesting shadows so it guides you to what, um, what you actually want. Um, now, because your eyes are drawn to contrast, you also have to be careful of the side effect, which is that you can accidentally create distraction. So this is a still from Blade Runner. And obviously this works in like a movie because there's lots of different shots and it's a sequence and all that kind of thing. But if this was a movie poster, it would fail pretty hard because you want to focus on the faces, like that's the interesting part of the shot. But because in the background, you've got these distracting uh, bright lights, your eyes are just fighting with the faces. You wanna look at the faces, but these bright lights are distracting you and it's guiding you there, right? And this is something that I've learned over the years is like, you gotta be, like actively aware of this when you're making a scene because so often you're making something and then without realizing it, you've built something into the background which is uh, grabbing all the attention because of its contrast. So here's an example of something that I made about six years ago for the Architecture Academy. At the time, I thought it was a great image. Looking back on it now, I can see that I created a distraction bomb, right? The eyes are drawn to pretty much the only thing in the image that I wouldn't want you to look at, which is these bright windows. The bright white light there in contrast with these dark uh, window shapes is creating so much contrast, your eyes are drawn there. And really, I want you to look anywhere but that. Look at the rest of the scene that I made, but no, I created um, a distraction bomb, right? Just because I, I wasn't aware. And actually, this is like really common for architectural renders, um, having a window open because you need to have light coming into the interior, but in doing so, you create like really bright patches uh, to look at. And this is why I realized in movies, Again, using one last example from Gone Girl. Um, they, they just did lighting really well in my opinion. Um, it's why they pull the shades down over windows. Not only because in this case it was shot on a sound stage and there's probably actually nothing out the windows, um, but also because interiors are dark and in order to 
actually see what's happening in a dark interior, you gotta turn the contrast of the camera way up. And in doing so, it makes outdoor environments like blow out and like scream, like, look at me. So uh, if there wasn't shades drawn over these windows here, um, you wouldn't be able to focus on Ben Affleck. Like you'd be looking at the windows because they'd just be so blindingly bright. So come up with clever ways to hide those uh, bright distractions. Now I wanna end on just a little example here. Um, again, I don't wanna pick on this photographer. I've taken much worse photographs than this um, in my life. Um, but I wanna just show an example. So this is a portrait, right? And obviously the key point of a portrait is the face, right? Like the eyes and the face, whatever. The eyes and the face are the window to the soul. <laughs> we'll, we'll make that the saying. Um, the face is the focus. But because of the emphasis, because you've got this bright white, uh, sorry, bright background, um, a white t-shirt, really high contrast with really dark pants, uh, very uh, like stark contrast between them. The face is actually like the least contrasted part of probably the whole image. Now your eyes are drawn there anyway because your brain is very good at recognizing faces, but it's not naturally gathered there. It's constantly fighting with this bright background. Compare that with this. And this obviously has a much much more readable and much more clear emphasis on the face. And the reason for that is the face is got the most brightness for one. Um, I, I, I looked into the eyes there. That's actually a very uh, easy way to find out what the lighting setup of a professional shoot is. Just look into the eyes of the person and you can read where the light setup is. It's just a sky in this case. Um, and I, I believe they have probably brightened it up using the Dodge tool as well to put extra emphasis on the face there. Uh, the clothing is I believe deliberately dark. And actually when I went looking for this, I noticed all professional photographers that make their models wear dark clothing because then that puts the high contrast element on the face instead of the clothing. Whereas in this example, you can see the clothing is white. It's kind of detracting from the face. So uh, so it's really dark. And as well as that, there's a, a, um, a hat, which I believe would be deliberate because it makes a basically a dark, like really dark border with a really high contrasted face right there. So. You can see the difference between the two is one is really readable, really strong emphasis on the face and the other isn't. So that's the difference that um, proper emphasis can have um, on the scene. So this video, as you might've noticed, is a lot to do with composition. So I've actually got a full video on this, which you can click in the top right-hand corner um, and watch that in full if you want to. Um, and as a bonus tip, just to close on, this is important, but I didn't find anywhere else in the series to really talk about it, um, implied lighting. Really simple, it's just using uh, shadows to add extra story or depth to, uh, to the environment by, by basically showing things that are outside of the camera frame, right? Um, so a really common one is to just have tree shadows beating down into the scene, making it look like the scene is much bigger and foliage -er. <laughs> Than, than it actually is. Like in this case, I don't even think we used, um, this was for the, uh, a polygon image. I don't even think we had tree models. I think it's just like tree planes that are like throwing light down here. Um, but it's really effective. It just makes it look like, yeah, there's trees outside the window, even though you don't need to see them, you know they're there because of the shadow. So it's called implied lighting. And it's just a really simple way to um, expand the size of the scene basically. So now there is actually a bonus video um, but if you've made it this far in the series, I think it's very clear that you like to learn new things, right? I can, I can guess that. So uh, I wanna suggest it again, if you haven't already, uh, check out my This Week in 3D newsletter, where I share like tips, techniques, or tutorials that I find um, that are helpful. Because in the 3D world, there is so much to learn, things are always changing and you can miss things. And then suddenly you're not aware that there's this software that does the thing you're trying to do. So it's just like a weekly primer of the top three to five links that I find during that week. Um, as I said, it's totally free and uh, it's always written by me. So if you're interested in learning more, I think you'll like uh, that newsletter list. Now, you have indeed made it to the end of the Lighting Mastery course. But before I congratulate you on a job well done watching all these videos, um, here's the thing. Uh, so far, all you've got is the theory, right? And when you learn something new, you read a book, you do something like that, you feel like you've truly learned it. But if you try to actually recall it at a later time, um, you often forget most of it, right? So here's the thing. 
while the information is still fresh in your mind, the best thing you could do is actually apply this to something. And I have just the thing to apply it to. Lighting challenge. So this is three dot blend files that were sent in by the community. I put a call out in the last couple of weeks saying that I was gonna light these scenes. Um, and these were three that I picked. The uh, authors of them gave me permission to redistribute them to you. Um, so if you click the link in the description, you can download it. And what I want you to do, if you're truly wanting to learn lighting and get better, I think this will really help you, um, is just try to light these scenes the best way you can. Add as many lights as you want to, one, three, a hundred, doesn't matter. Just try to light it like a nice, pleasing final image. Um, you could add world lighting, you could change the background, you could even move the camera slightly if you wanted to, but really it's just about the lighting. Just try and figure out how to make it look good. And going through this process will really, as I said, help solidify those methods. And then uh, once you've finished it, post it on reddit.com r forward slash, uh, whatever. <laughs> the, this, the Blender Guru subreddit, the one that's written on the screen right there, right? And then in the next video, in this bonus video, um, I'm gonna do it myself. So I'm gonna do like a, uh, in real time, showing you how I light it and the end result that I got up. Um, so I will see you in the next video, but before you just go and click here, uh, download it now and try it out yourself. And then once you've given it a go, then go ahead and watch the next video.